As budget season approaches, we thought it was prudent to take our taxpayers through a deep dive of Homedell's financial trends, how the governing body is evaluating future initiatives, and what we aspire to deliver for each and every one of you. To be clear, this is an apolitical discussion focused only on data, facts, and absolute transparency. As we all know, conditions can drive decisions. Decisions overall, we're sure, have good intent as ours do. But due to historical trends, it's clear that the impact of decisions now must be more heavily considered than they were perhaps in the past. That doesn't mean there hasn't been good work done. We have a new firehouse. It simply means that fiscal responsibility should now pivot more toward fiscal conservatism. Before we get started, I want to thank the governing body for their support and dedication to our town, Deputy Mayor Brian Foster, Committeeman DJ Lucarelli, Committeewoman Kim Mountain, and Committeeman Joe Romano. I also want to separately thank Eric Silvergold, the chair of our finance committee, for the unbelievable analysis he's pulled together that we can now share with you today. Next, I want to thank out the outstanding leaders we have here in Town Hall. Administrator Jay Delaney for his expert stewardship of our town. CFO Bill Antonides for his masterful management of our budget. Barbara Kovaleski for her amazing work, particularly in identifying and procuring grants to fund our many initiatives. Wendy Patrovich for her exceptional work as our township clerk. People don't realize how much work actually flows through Wendy's office. Police Chief Frank Alaco and his unyielding commitment to our safety. Victor Stevens, head of public works, who quite literally makes our town go by maintaining and improving our infrastructure. And Steve Winters, who manages community development with energy, passion, and pragmatism. And last but not least, Jason Wieg for his expert management of our IT infrastructure. This evening, we're going to go through an introduction to the town, very high level. We're going to talk about our mission as a governing body. Uh, and then we're going to really deep dive deeply into our financial analysis and trends. And then we're going to talk about our strategic priorities and the timing of those uh, on the back half of this presentation. You know, the overarching point here I want everyone to understand is, you know, we're looking at financial trends and economic conditions, and we're using those to help us assess what our future budgetary constraints uh, review and, and think about potential headwinds uh, are so that we can be more responsibly manage our government. This is your township committee. I'm Mayor Rocco and Prevedudo. We have Deputy Mayor Brian Foster, Committeewoman Kim LaMountain, Committeeman DJ Lucarelli, and Committeeman Joe Romano. For starters, Homedale has about 17,000 residents over 18 square miles. There are approximately 6,000 homes, and we actually are home to the highest point in Monmouth County at 391 feet above sea level, which is Crawford Hill, future site of Robert Wilson Park and home of the Homedale Horn Antenna. We have renowned landmarks like the New Jersey Vietnam Veterans Memorial, PNC Bank Arts Center, Homedale Park, and Bell Works. We have amazing parks here, Bayonet Farm, Veterans Park, Ackerson Park, Alaco Park, Cross Farm Fields, Phillips Park, Labby Park, and of course, Alex's Paw Park. That's all to just showcase the wonderful, unique culture and setting that we have here in town. The historic longstanding cultural pillars of our town are really the perfect guide for our mission in 2024. As you can see on the right, we anchor ourselves to public safety, open space, recreation, low taxes, innovation, and education. So our mission this year is to best serve the interests of Homedale and its residents by embracing and enhancing the characteristics that have made our town one of the best places to live in New Jersey, while reinvigorating fiscal conservatism within our governance process so we can ensure out-year financial health and well-being. That mission is going to cascade through this document as you see more and more data and information that leads us along that path. On to our financial overview and trends. The first and most important point here is Homedale's financial health is strong, but headwinds could be looming. So the governing body is working to slow spend while still delivering for our residents. But for review, we are a triple A rated town. Uh, to my knowledge, there are fewer than 10% uh, municipalities in this, fewer than 10% of New Jersey's municipalities are triple A rated. We have an incredibly stable tax rate where we project a 0% municipal tax rate increase on an annual basis. We are managing a $5 million budget surplus coming over from prior year, 
And the pilot program, which mostly comes through Bell Works, uh, is bringing in close to $7 million a year now to the township. So here's a breakdown of tax revenues and how they're allocated. Your property taxes contribute to three separate and distinct budgets, Monmouth County, Homedale Township, and the Homedale Board of Education. The entire tax levy for Homedale is just under $91 million. 68% of that goes to the Homedale School District. 18.5% of that goes to Homedale Township, which includes our Municipal Open Space Fund. And 13.5% goes to Monmouth County, which is included in their budget, their library system, their health office, Open Space Fund, etc. Your property taxes, that same 18.5%, actually only account for 50% of all of our township revenues. In 2023, the Homedale Township budget was $30.3 million, and it's comprised of four primary categories. Our, your taxes, which you see there, is 49%. The pilot program, which comprises about 14%. Prior year fund balances, which is that surplus that I'd mentioned earlier, and a bucket called miscellaneous revenues. And miscellaneous revenues are really a mixture of one-time benefits and ancillary fees that are received by the town such as uniform construction code fees. We received one-time COVID uh, aid relief uh, last year, state energy tax receipts, receipts from delinquent taxes, and, and a few other things. Those revenue streams fund the entirety of Homedale Township's operating infrastructure, with public safety comprising nearly 30% of the overall budget. Departmental spending, what we call departmental spend, which, which are the blue pieces of the pie on the right-hand side, is responsible for 51% of all township expenditures. That's comprised of public safety at 28%, which is police, fire, EMS, public works at 10%, which is roads, central repairs, snow removal, recycling, what we call general government, which is the IT office, administration, finance and legal, and then community development, community development and recreation, which is 4%. Non-departmental spending is really led by the cost of paying down our debt. Debt service comprises 17%. What that is is interest and principal payments on outstanding debt, similar to what you do for a mortgage or a loan. Um, we've bonded for initiatives in the past, um, and now um, those you know we're paying the principal and interest against that. Employee pension plans comprise 12%. Insurance comprises 8%. And then the remainder is a mixture of uncollected tax reserve, utilities, shared services, capital improvement funds, etc. All in, salaries, pensions and, pensions, and insurance account for about 56% of the total municipal spend. So now that you understand how the dollars are allocated, collected, where they go, I want to show you the financial trends leading up to this year. When we assess our budget expectations for 24, we look back at our trend line, which suggests a more conservative approach to municipal spending is prudent. Since 2013, our municipal budget has increased 47%. Over that same time, inflation increased by 32%. In short, municipal spend has outpaced inflation, driven by salary or wage increases, higher debt service payment, pensions, and a variety of other things. But, but we've outpaced inflation, which is the part that gets us a little bit more um, concerned as we look into out years. While the township spend was increasing at an historic rate, debt service likewise spiked to historically high records. Debt service, as we mentioned earlier, as a percent of Homedale's spend, is the highest in over a decade at over 17%. Principal plus interest, the raw dollars, is the highest it has ever been at 5.2 million. And I do want to commend former mayor and current committeeman DJ Lucarelli. When he served as mayor, uh, we made a point to reduce the number of capital spend, right? Every budget is broken up into operating expenses and capital expenses, but to reduce the capital spend so that we would incur lesser debt and, and have less to pay off in out years. So that was the first sort of step in curbing uh, municipal spending here. These increases though also coincided with a commensurate increase in our budget's reliance on the pilot revenues. For those that don't know, pilot stands for payment in lieu of taxes. That is essentially uh, the Bell Works project, uh, the building and the 55 and over community that's there. The 95% of the revenues generated actually flow into Homedale Township directly. They, they bypass uh, the district and, and the county. Those revenues have increased rapidly since 2018. 
The annual realized revenues now are about 6.7 million. As we saw earlier, they're about 14% of our budget. But the way we budget and the way we anticipate revenues, we typically budget assuming lower revenues coming in. It keeps us healthy. It keeps our cash position strong. Um, so when you take that, when you, when you think about the actuality of, of, of the pilot and how much, uh, what percentage of our, of our spend it comprises, it's really about 22%. Um, so our opinion coming out of this is that township should take long-term fiscal planning steps in anticipation of potential pilot revenues plateauing. Right. You, what you can see here with the pilot revenues is there was about a 10% lift year over year from 22 to 23. That was, you know, it, it, it's grown beyond that in fits and starts. What we're, what we're concerned about is if those revenues plateau and we keep spending at the pace we're spending, the town's going to get into a fiscal jam later on, right? So if we start curbing spending now, we'll be better prepared to withstand a plateauing or a slowing of the pilot revenue growth. In recent years, the pilot has allowed us to hold the tax rate down while spending and debt increased. From 2013 to 2018, the tax rate held, the municipal tax rate held without the pilot. And the reason this point is important is because I want people to understand it can be done. We don't need to rely solely on the pilot to keep the tax rate down while we're, while we're you know, spending on other projects. The critical path here is to slow the spending. The amount of taxes raised in 2023 was 14.8 million, which is only 7% higher than it was in 2013. You can see in the chart on the left, okay? Th these are in millions, by the way, 14 million up to about 15. When you adjust for inflation, our tax burden in home dollars actually decreased over the last decade from 13 million, from, this is the revenues coming in, to about 11 million, right? That's unbelievable, and it's something we should be proud of, but it's something that is unsustainable at the current spend rate. The direct correlation between spend and debt growth, which has been supported by a significant reliance on pilot, again, lacks that long-term stability. The chart on the right is a little bit confusing, but the green line is the pilot revenues, the spend, the, the, the spend is in red, and the debt service payments are in blue. You can see the, the really tight correlation between the three. As money came in, money was being spent, right? As that money was being spent, we were also incurring more debt than we ever had before. Again, that's not to say it was without reason or purpose, um, but it is to say that we did quite a lot and we, you know, we, we spent quite a bit in a short period of time. And we must be, we must be much better paced. We need to be uh, much more deliberate and pulse out that spend and, and the bonding and the debt that we incur you know, over longer periods of time in order to flatten out you know, our overall municipal spending and decrease our reliance on those pilot funds. The correlation between debt spend and pilot funding just it couldn't be clearer, indicates we have to exercise budgetary restraint now to, pre to prevent a problem in out years. You know, and, and that's to say again, you know, for the record, our fiscal health is strong. We are, we are in, in very, very good condition thanks to the work of our CFO, Bill Antonides, but we're trying to pre prevent an issue in the years to come. So those are the financials. That's everything we've gone through and, and sort of worked through um, and everything we look at, right? When we look at those spend trends and we look at all these things, it just tells us, it paints a very clear picture for us, right? That we've got to be more judicious in how we're spending your money. Um, and we've got to make sure we protect ourselves against, against these headwinds that could be looming in the future. But that's not to say that we're not doing anything, right? This is a very thoughtful but action-oriented governing body. Um, and so we have a number of strategic priorities that we want to review with you that we, that we are going to initiate or hope to complete this year um, and then you know, talk about the timing of some. So our strategic priorities for 2024 cascade directly from those six key pillars, ensuring that our actions are in full alignment with Homedell's standards. The only, we're going to go through all of these except low taxes because I think we've, we've hit that point pretty hard looking at the financials. Our expectation this year for 2024 is to once again have a 0% municipal tax increase. Um, but we want to do that while we try to slow down spending and try to reduce bonding, which leads to, 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 to debt that we have to pay off in the long run. To responsibly enhance our town, provide more for our residents, and preserve our culture, we are diligently procuring outside funding and grants. 
Monmouth County, you know, if you, if you look at the largest part of this is, right, these, these are the grants over the past two years. Monmouth County was the largest, and that was towards the, you know, and, and the, and the uh, uh, grant they provided us, um, which went to the uh, Crawford Hill acquisition, which will become Wilson Park. Um, we also had a rescue fighter grant, federal congressional community funding that was also going to Wilson Park to the tune of half a million dollars. Monmouth County Park Improvements uh, got us for Bayonet at 272 and municipal aid at 288. We have three others that are pending and four others that we were denied. So as you can see, the process works. We request, sometimes we receive, sometimes we don't, sometimes we receive less. But more than $12 million has been requested since 2023 and nearly $5 million has been awarded. And again, the largest contributor is, is Monmouth County and their support of the Crawford Hill acquisition and the preservation of the Horn Antenna. So speaking about education, starting with, with that pillar, the township is working more collaboratively with the Homedale Board of Education than ever before to collectively support our children. Our three-stage approach to establishing a stronger, more dynamic and productive environment that better supports our school district is underway with a focus on three key areas, public safety, facilities, and infrastructure. We are gonna to move tonight to pass a resolution that will provide full funding for school security officers. It'll be retroactive to January, 2023, and will provide $300,000 in operating OPEX relief to the Homedale Board of Education. It is our belief that the township is responsible for public safety and that we should foot the bill for school security officers. Um, that said, by taking on that responsibility, we're, off, we're, we're, we're allowing the Board of Ed or we're, we're affording the Board of Ed the opportunity to redirect you know, $300,000, more than $300,000 back towards uh, our kids and the resources for them. We're also going to pass a resolution this evening uh, that will help us make improvements to the high school field, the new turf field. Uh, we will split funding with the Board of Education for lights on that new turf field. And we're also gonna provide assistance for the Duncan Smith Theater, which is also on Board of Education property. We are also collaborating on other upgrades for, improvement, uh, for improvements within the school. And then third, and, and, and certainly last but not least, um, we're conducting exploratory diligence on improving the intersection in front of Homedale High School. Uh, we're currently reviewing engineers' reports and recommendations to determine timeline and cost. Uh, this is something that if anyone's you know, seen the traffic that hits when kids are coming in and out of school in the morning and buses, um, you know that it's a choke point in town. And I've spoken to a number, number of engineers that know our town and know it well. They all think it's something that if we had the resources to do, to do 15 years ago, it should have been done then. Um, and, if you, and if anybody was taking their kids to, to, to school today, they saw what, you know, uh, there was a car fire and you could see sort of, you know, thankfully everybody was okay and, and wonderful response from our firefighters and, and emergency services and police. Um, but you can see what, you know, a disruption to that area does um, when people are trying to go through. So it's something that we want to be cognizant of, that we are cognizant of, that we're going to look to help alleviate uh, potentially this year. On the recreation side, we've collectively recognized the need to maintain optimal outdoor public recreation and upgrade internal facilities for events. There are three goals for recreation. Ensure residents have a variety of outdoor options available to suit their recreation interests, continue to expand programs for our residents, and maintain optimal facilities for those who experience them. So by this summer, probably late summer, we expect to have five new pickleball courts, one new basketball court, and one new volleyball court at the Homedale Swim and Tennis Club for year-round use. You will not have to be, you, you will be a resident, but you will not have to be a member of the Swim and Tennis Club to use those courts. Uh, we've added a number of new recreation programs in 2024, kids art, teen art, tennis classes, pickleball classes, intro to gymnastics, and the teen social club. And we've initiated renovations to the community center, the senior center. Uh, and we're awaiting approval on a grant that will help us upgrade playgrounds and parks throughout town. So just as we're looking to support the, the education pillar, we continue to support our recreation pillar. From an open space perspective, our agricultural roots flow through the DNA of our town. And though it becomes more challenging each year, we're working to honor that history. Your governing body is fully committed to preserving open space, staying ahead of property matters, matters and responsibly managing potential new developments. We have our ribbon cutting for Robert Wilson Park in April 2024. That's 35 acres preserved for passive recreation, 
We're working now to clean up the property and remove hazards, and we'll be sending out an RFP to start drafting and reviewing design concepts. Homedale Township has preserved more than 1,000 acres of land, 800 via the Rossi, 300 are non-Rossi that are uh, preserved for open space, buffers, and farms. And we also created an ad hoc committee for the Vonage property in South Homedale. That property consists of 88 acres and a 350,000 square foot building. The purpose of the ad hoc committee is to provide residents with a transparent process and a voice and a recommendation in how they see that, pro that, that property uh, developing over time with the owner. They'll make a recommendation to the governing body and the governing body will evaluate that recommendation as we continue to negotiate a path forward for the, for the Vonage property. For public safety, you know, we're investing in public, public safety measures, equipment, and facilities. It's an ongoing priority that ensures we're doing everything we can to protect our residents. From fire, you've seen, you've seen improved ISO ratings. Uh, we are currently evaluating the remaining gaps to, to improve those ratings even further and discussing potential further remediation and improvement. We've also provided new trucks and new equipment. On police, there are new locker rooms, new video equipment. We added two new officers in 2023 and evaluating the addition of two more in 2024. We've also upgraded the training facility. On the EMS side, we've initiated wholesale renovations to the EMS building, including additional space and facility upgrades. And then last but not least, we, we've initiated a stormwater study. The stormwater study looks at six focused areas in town that have to be addressed and evaluated objectively. Um, they are the most heavily impacted by the severe storms that, that we get uh, through flooding, uh, debris and other measures. Um, so to evaluate objectively, you know, how we look at the prioritization of remediating those areas, we'll look at the number of residents impacted, the severity of impact, the level of effort to remediate and cost. We expect to get this work done. We expect to start it this year, but it's going to be a multi-year process. The six areas that we're doing this with are Palmer Ave, McCampbell Road, Crawford's Corner, Catbird Alley, Hayward Hills, and White Cedar Lane. And last but not least, innovation. The history of innovation in Homedale is nearly unparalleled and remains infused in our culture to this day. The avenues by which we continue to embrace innovation are threefold. We honor these historic accomplishments where we can, support and celebrate the innovative businesses currently in our town, and seek to advance our township assets to a, toward a new and brighter future. So we have preserved Homedale's historic horn antenna, a national historic landmark, it will become a new celebrated focal point in our town. We're working now to ensure the safety of the structure and determining whether or not we can keep it operational. Bell Works honors the tradition of innovation with cutting edge businesses that are developing self-driving cars, new energy efficiencies and creative network solutions. And our township committee is currently exploring the installation of solar panels on all township buildings to generate energy and cost savings that can be redistributed to residents. We are a member of the Sustainable Mammoth Alliance, which is a first step in that process. So as we conclude this discussion, you know, what you can see is a very tight focus on our spending, how uh, municipal spending, how that money is being spent, what the trends are, and how that data, how those trends influence and impact our decision making for Homedale on the go forward. Again, our expectation is to exercise a new level of fiscal conservatism just to ensure that we don't hit a crisis in later years. Um, I hope this was informative. I hope this was helpful. I hope you've taken from this what we intended, which is, you know, we are always, you know, our residents, our taxpayers, and how the taxpayer money is being spent is always top of mind. And we are committed to turning around and doing more for the community than, than we ever have before. So thank you very much for your attention uh, and have a good evening.